Thank you for watching. YouTubers, please subscribe, click the notification bell, like and share. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, simply join the Dominion Center page by clicking like, then like the video, comment, and share the video. Thank you. Good morning, Kingdom citizens, and welcome to the Dominion Center. What an amazing time we had this week with our guest speaker, Apostle S.C. Johnson. On behalf of our bishop and pastor, Rodney and Michelle Roberts, we would like to thank you for joining us on this Sunday morning. And to all of our first-time visitors, please don't forget to fill out your visitor's cards and return them directly to us after service at the media table where there's a special gift waiting just for you. Our nursery is available from the ages of newborn to seven years of age. So please avail yourself to our nursery department so that you can freely worship in today's service. We ask that you reverence God and be respectful by not eating in the sanctuary at any given time. If you must do so, please feel free to visit our nursery department. Now it's time to check in, so take out your cell phones and go to Facebook. Go to your news feed, hit your check-in button, click on to the Dominion Center and say something inspirational. Now, here are your announcements. Join us this Wednesday at 7 p.m. for prayer and Bible study as we dig deeper into the Word of Yah. If you don't have time for breakfast on Sunday mornings, don't worry, we've got you covered with free light refreshments right here at the Dominion Center at 9 a.m. Come on out and join us for a free cup of coffee or tea. If you like to start your morning off with other believers bringing heaven into the earth, according to Matthew 18 and 19, join us on our prayer call at 605-475-4000, access code 575-169-POUND. Dominion family and friends, join us on our Dominion app. You can download this free app by going to your Google Play Store or your Apple Store and clicking onto the Dominion Center and download. This is a way to stay social with your church family and continue sharing what God is doing in your life. Don't forget to opt in for our latest news and emergencies. You can do so by texting Living in Dominion to 55469. That's Living in Dominion to 55469. Family, we need you. In order for our church to function and flourish at its optimum level, we need everyone vested. Remember, the whole is greater than the part. So share your gifts, talents, and abilities with our helps ministry. We are better together when we have enough loving people serving. So go over and sign up immediately after service at the media table. We'd like to thank you in advance. To all of our Kingdom Citizen parents, our Kingdom Kids are asking for donations to make sure that they have a nutrition snack during their lesson time. For more information, please see Pastor Michelle Roberts. Ready in progress. Thy thoughts shall be established. Let me read that again. Commit thy thoughts or thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Verse 4 is where I want to sort of focus in on today. Verse 4. The Lord has made all things for himself. Could, you, could I get y'all to lift your voice now so you don't go to sleep? Read that with me. The Lord has made all things for himself. Say it again. The Lord has made all things for himself. Look at this next part. Yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Even the wicked for the day of evil. Um, let me look at Proverbs 21, 13, and we'll establish, I guess we have to have some sort of theme or some sort of uh, title. So we'll try to push that moment. Proverbs 21 and 3. Whosoever keepeth 23. 
Verse 23. Proverbs 21, 23. Thank you. Whosoever keepeth his mouth. Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. I've been looking to the side and I forgot it was right here in front of me. Keepeth his soul from trouble. Look, look at somebody just so we can be a little churchy and just say this. Say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. It's not going to go the way you think, but, but watch your mouth. In terms of Proverbs 18, 21 says, death and life lie in the power of the tongue. And so we have to understand quickly that we, we, have, we have power. We talked about the anointing. But we now, as spirit-filled individuals who are ambassadors, diplomats in the earth to bring a new culture or a new citizenship, we're a new creature, a new species, we've been regened. So that means we've, we've, been, we've been brought back by, by the last Adam, or Jesus Christ, according to Romans, the fifth chapter, back to a position of dominion or dominance or reign. And so to whom much is given, much now is in return required. You're not, you're not ordinary, although you live in an ordinary body. In fact, if you keep living, you're going to find out that your body is failing you, and it is, in fact, your enemy. So we have internal affairs, but that we, we've, been, we've been granted access back to a place of prominence before Adam and Eve forfeited and, and legally was deceived out of that place of dominance. He made man in his own image. In his own likeness. What does that mean? Like him. The ability to create with our mouths. Amen. Amen. It'll be all right. To create with our mouths. We, we create, our, create our environment with our mouths. Women, y'all should know that because as a man that you fall in love with, you open yourselves up to him once you give him your heart. The things that, uh, if it, the things that you have intentions on doing with him regardless, blessing him however, but if he says the wrong thing, it shuts down everything. In fact, it, it, was, it wasn't just how he was. See, women, in fact, are sound motivated. Sound motivated. Eve messed up because of ver verbiage, sound. But men, men are more sight motivated. Am I boring y'all already? Sight motivated, sight motivated. That's why with a, with a woman, you're talking about a wife, Intimacy for us fellas starts, we can be tired and sleepy and, 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 and whatever. And, and, and once that, that, that wife of ours gets out of the shower, if she just walks anywhere within our peripheral, I wish y'all loose enough in here. <laughs> she towels off and then puts her undergarments and you hear a, a pop sound. Look now. Anywhere in our peripheral. And all of a sudden, we, we're engaged in, in, in whatever. And all of a sudden, sight changes our whole perception. Sight triggers thought. But with a woman, if you haven't been, been, been speaking to her and saying the right things earlier in the day, and if you don't say the right things, it doesn't activate anything in her. So what a man is, a, a man in essence is a quarterback, and a woman is a receiver, a man a man ejects and injects, and then a woman receives and incubates that that he has put in her. So, so, so a man puts in a woman the child. She houses and and she houses and incubates the pain and has to stretch and everything changes in her. And then she gives you back what you gave her. So, fellas, if we don't like what we're getting from our spouses, those of us that's married, we need to check what we are injecting into them by way of sound. Don't be surprised if, if you said the wrong thing today and, and, and next week it starts. See, women don't forget anything. And then they want to talk about the stuff they haven't forgotten at a time when you, you, you fellas, you're not even in the mood. You, don't, you forgot all about it. And so we become silent and we, and we we're quiet. We let them do all the talking. And so there's nothing that is coming from us that is developing what he's given us a responsibility over to develop within the blessing that he's he that findeth a wife. Let me move. Find.
found it a, a good thing and obtained favor from the most high. So we don't understand the purpose of things and the privilege of things that he has given us. And it is assignment to develop and sharpen our kingdom authority that you can't minister outside the house until you minister inside the house. Bring it back again. You, you nobody outside of you until you start to understand what has happened inside of you. So we as a body become, we become the wife or the bride of Christ. So he says the things within us that is in his mind to develop us so that he sees through us the intent that he has for us. He didn't just start it to deciding to work when you. to the image of his dear son. So he's not trying to forge or form or, 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 or fabricate or manufacture who you want to be. He's manufacturing the intention of his son. So he's looking for the image of his son. I know y'all quiet church and y'all listen, but I'm a little different. So if there's something that hits you, the Bible, see, the promises of God are yea and amen. When you hear truth, when you bear witness to truth, it releases the spirit to release more truth. Because it says I'm attentive and I'm receiving this. Instead of a judgmental pro, pro, uh, uh, spirit, or I'm just listening. Listen and acknowledge. You understand? And so what happens is this. See, Paul said, I'm going to labor with you until Christ be formed formed in you because I, I in my mind I have something for this concoction called your body and I'm learning how to speak it this is why this is why he never orders our intellect his ways are past finding out who has known the mind of Yah that any may instruct him his ways are not our ways his thoughts are not our thoughts as high as the heavens are above the earth so are his ways above our ways and so what he does is he says I, I'm not going to order your intellect uh, but see the steps of a good man they're ordered by the most high and what I'm going to do is not order your thoughts I'm going to order your feet and so now that that's not logistical, it's not logical. So what he says is logic becomes the enemy of faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please me. So if I'm ordering your steps, you're going to have to trust me when it don't make sense. And common sense and trying to figure it out sometimes hinders the process of the image of Christ being formulated in you. So I'm going to preach right past. I'm, I'm just going to look at the light. So what happens is this. He gets to a realm and to a place as he's formulating us that the image of Christ has to be banged into you, banged into you. It is a process. Remember, Jesus told Peter, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, renders to Yah what is Yah. And then Jesus asked Peter, who? Whose inscription is on that coin? Caesar. Well, if you look at a penny, you look at a quarter, George Washington or Abraham Lincoln's image or facial profile or even the, 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 the front of the face is on there. Well, what that is is just metal and somebody has some sort of an image on another piece and they have to warm up or heat up that metal. And somebody takes something that has that image on it and they have it in the hand or a pressing machine. And once that metal is heated up and something, Bing! That's how, that's how Caesar's inscription was put on pieces of metal. It had to be hammered into metal that was heated up. And so what he does is he puts us in the fiery furnace of affliction. Think it not a strange thing concerning the fiery trials which ought to try you as though some strange thing has happened unto you. Ain't nothing, uh -uh, ain't nothing strange. What he's doing is heating you up so that his image can be smashed into the... Uh, yeah, he, is, he wants to he wants to correct and straighten out situations that you've been perceived and you've received through verbiage that have told you you'll never be nothing. This is your plight for life. You're going to be just like your daddy, and you got to flip that thing around because the intention of the enemy, who is a liar, was negative to tell you you're going to be like the negative attributes of your natural dad. But you got to flip it around and say, you know what, devil? Yeah, I am going to be just like my daddy. But it is a problem. Oh, let me a little bit of base. It is a process that I have to endure. And, uh, 
some of y'all ain't saying nothing, man. It's a process that I've got to endure the pain and the agony because what he's doing is until I start to walk like him and talk like him, then I'll never live like him. But some of y'all got to understand something in the natural, first natural, then spiritual. Somebody said, boy, you look just like your daddy. You got ears like him. You, you hold your head like him. You bite your lip like him. You're the spitting image of your daddy. Yeah, well, I ought to look like my daddy if I came out of the loins of my daddy. I ought to look like my daddy. I ought to look like my mother if I come from my mother. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Well, wait a minute now. If we've been regened, and the Bible said, for as many as received him, unto them gave he the power. To be, I'm just going to preach. I ain't got no no. I'm going to flow in the Holy Ghost. Unto them that received him, unto them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, so what has happened now is this. If God is a holy God, y'all's holy, right? Then why can't a holy God have holy children? If he's a holy God, if he's if he's an immutable God, meaning he doesn't change, if he's a powerful God, then why can't he have powerful children? But if he is a God that creates everything by what comes out of his mouth, then why can't he have children who are now creative beings like him in the earth who create their environment by their mouth? See, so negative environment, that's why the Bible said evil communications. That's uh, in Corinthians 15, 33. Evil communications corrupt good manners. What does that mean? Translation. When you hang around people who don't know who they are, you subjugate yourself to what they say. And whatever they say comes in down into your spirit and it influences how you speak. And that's why he said, I got to order your steps. I made all things, amen, for my glory, even the wicked for the day of evil. So I purpose events and circumstances and I strategize things that were already predestinated to get into your life and they're shaping and sharpening you so that's why the Bible said these light afflictions could I preach here Bishop on a Sunday these light afflictions which are but for a moment worketh yeah, they worketh. These light afflictions worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Yeah, it's working for me now. Tribulation worketh patience, patience, experience, and experience hope, and hope maketh not ashamed that I might get to a place where the love of Yah is shed abroad in my hearts by the Holy Ghost. So circumstances that are arising in your life have been predetermined and preordained by the Most High. Why? Bing! He's trying to put that image. That's why Paul said to y'all, you're not hearing what I'm saying. That's where the struggle is. Your struggle ain't with the devil. I know we're fighting principalities and we're not wrestling flesh and blood in principalities. I know what Ephesians 6 says, but you don't find nobody wrestling with the devil in the scripture. But you follow, you do find Jacob, whose name was first lettered out and spoken out of the mouth of his parents. They called him Jacob, which means a surplanter deceiver. Why? Because people have a tendency to name you predicated upon your actions and he grabbed his brothers Esau by the heel and when Esau was born Jacob grabbed. So his parents looked and they named him based upon his actions. Yeah, but not upon his destiny. And when I'm trying, oh yeah, they named him Jacob, meaning from birth. How many people have labeled you from birth? Labeled you from childhood? And when they labeled you, they limited you. But I, what do you do? What do you do? when man's expectation and label of you starts to conflict with what the most high's destiny is for your life. Uh, Y'all still ain't said nothing to me in here. Uh, so what are you saying? Uh, that image, that image, that image that I'm trying to drive. But now what do, we, what do we find? We find Jacob wrestling, not with the devil, but he's wrestling with an angel. What is he wrestling about? He doesn't know because he doesn't instigate it. But the angel instigated because it's time for me to change your name because I have to undo what they said so that I can undo what I'm saying because there is a whole nation that has to come out of you. Nobody wants to help me preach. I'm telling you here, he's setting you up for what's coming behind you. There are promises that have been placed on you that not just for you to be saved and receive the Holy Ghost, but it's for your children's children. I'm trying to get it up on the anointing and trying to walk in my already so 
I can leave something for my children. The Bible said a good man, watch this, a good man leaveth an inheritance for his children's children. That's not just an inheritance of money and life insurance. That's an inheritance of an anointed and power and authority spoken from a position of authority that will line my children up with the destiny. You got to fight for it. You know, you got to fight for it. You got to fight in the spirit for it. But we're in a selfish society now that we only fight for what we can see now. We only invest in how we get something out of it. But there's something coming behind us. How you hear? I'm worried about my children. So my worrying for my children is causing me to allow him to be able to order my steps. I don't even understand what he's doing sometimes, but I trust him. Tell your neighbor, say, I trust him. Come on, man. Tell your neighbor, say, I don't get it. I don't get it. Y'all give me some energy, Jesus. Somebody say, I don't get it. I, I don't understand what he's doing right now, but I don't need to understand it. All I got to do is trust him right here because all things work together for my good. I got to believe it. It don't feel like it. And Jacob is wrestling with an angel. The angel hits him in the hip. The hip is a place that supports one side of the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if my hip goes out, I have to have have something I can lean on yeah but now when I'm leaning on something because I can't support my own weight I've got to now lean on something to hold me up on that side so when the angel hits his hip when Jacob now is forced to hold on tighter to what he's wrestling with but if you notice Jacob only wants to be loosed Jacob is saying, hey, yeah, he fight, he wants to be loosed. But when the angel hit his hip, Jacob said, I can't let you go now. So the angel turns around and says, let me go. Let me go. Why? See, that's the testing of the most high to find out how bad do you want him? How bad do you want it? How bad can you suffer for him? Can you go through the pain? Can you go through the betrayal? Can you go through him hitting you in a place where you're no longer leaning to your own understanding? But you got to, I'm going to preach in this place today, but you got to acknowledge him in all of your ways that he might direct your steps. Yeah. See, that's what we have to have now. We got too much flesh, too much carnality, too much intellect, too much family pride. Look at me. Our titles are in the way. But he's saying, you don't understand something. Before you had a title, it was me calling you to a place of dominion. Before that rebellion hit you. See, we where they'll position themselves and allow the potter to begin to mold the clay after his own will. So why, 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 who am I preaching to in this place? Give me a little juice. Who am I preaching to? I'm, I, I'm trying to hurry. Tell somebody real fast, watch your mouth. Tell them, come on, say, watch your mouth. Jacob's wrestling. He's wrestling. He's wrestling. He first, first, first now let me go. Hip hit. So now he's leaning his weight on the angel. I believe it's Genesis 32 possibly. Yeah. But now the angel turns around and says, let me go. Huh, let me go. Huh, let me go. Angels said, let me go. I can't let you go now because you done hit me. Oh, yeah. I got to tell somebody something. Paul said in Philippians, I count not myself to have apprehended. Uh -huh, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Talk about the walk with him, Paul. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Why you ain't count yourself to have apprehended? He said, you know what? I seek to apprehend in that that I've been apprehended of. In other words he touched me and woke up something in me and then ran away and want me to chase him. Y'all ain't talking to me in this place. He touched me and he touched me. See y'all are go crazy over a man. Go crazy over somebody with some good sex. Y'all keying up cars 
You can't go to work. You can't eat. Why you Negroes won't wave at me at least one time? It's blowing my mind. Yeah, you'll sit up here and be ready to fight. You're on court. Hallelujah. With baby daddy drama. Some of y'all have been out of relationship for 15 years and can't proceed in a blessed relationship now because you're still stuck of the hurt that somebody else did to you years ago. Hit your neighbor, say, put it behind you. If I take you back to the Lion King, I would say Hakuna Matata. Yeah, it means no worries. Let it go. But what's wrong with us now? Why, why don't we have reckless abandon when it's time to go after the Christ? Why don't we have reckless abandon when it's time to go after dominion and authority? You're going crazy over a Negro, but won't go crazy over him that'll cause you to grow. You want to crazy about a woman keying up cars, criminal minded, criminal actions. You're fighting all beside yourself, embarrassing your family and children over some sex. Well, I came to tell you this. Intimacy comes from Yah into me. See? Intimacy comes from him. Sex was created by him to regene uh, for procreation, for recreation, but he designed it to be between lawfully married people. Why? When you have sex with somebody, you become one with the person you have sex with. So now, you don't just give it up to anybody who just gives you some time, who takes you to the movies, and you don't just go get it to anybody that spreads it, because your dominion and his calling and his image has to become too valuable for you to sell yourself that cheap. Tell me, tell somebody, I can lean on him. Yeah. But pain is what makes us lean on him. Jacob is now the angel the script he says let me go and Jacob said he would say bless me he It's something about pain that'll make us ask. It's something about pain that'll make us cry. It's something about struggles that make us go to God. Comfort becomes the enemy of faith. Are you in not doubt? I said comfort. When you are comfortable, you don't pray. When you are comfortable, you depend on your intellect. When you are comfortable, you depend on friends and influence. But whenever God wants to get your attention. He sends trouble. Y'all ain't helping me here. He sends trouble. Why? Because outside of trouble, it's only your flesh that starts screaming help. And your spirit says, listen, I've got to bear up the infirmities. So now if you got the Holy Ghost, we don't know how to pray as we ought. But the spirit maketh intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. He helpeth our infirmities. So God allows our bodies to go through some stuff because the only way for us to walk in dominion is we got to mortify the deeds of the flesh. Shout, I die daily, but you won't die until you have pain. Ain't nothing like pain that'll make you press into a praise and break out in the prayer. I say send the pain so I can lean on Y'all ain't talking. Jacob says, Lord, let me go. Let me go. And now, wait a minute. The angel flips the script after he hits his hip. And the angel said, let me go. Jacob said, oh, no. If I let you go, I'm going to fall over. Y'all ain't talking to me. He intercepted our lives. It was by loving and kindness that he drew us. We didn't choose him. He chose us, but after he chose you, he put a lip in your life. So you would always have to depend on him. That's why you never become intimidated by these old decrepit elders that don't have the Holy Ghost, but have a position in somebody's pulpit who sits there and look at you like you don't have the Holy Ghost and don't have power. Y'all ain't talking to me. Wait. Why won't? 
Let me get that again. Because the most high, he has a confidential file with a big old manila envelope written in black mark. Every one of our names and tucked inside of it is confidential information about the mistakes you made since you've had the Holy Ghost instead of you having the audacity of pride because he used you a little bit. He points to the file cabinet and pulls out the file and shows your name on it. Never be intimidated because if our real testimony were to flash up on the screen, it wouldn't show apostle. It wouldn't show prophet. It wouldn't show you church performing. Let the cameras follow you to the places where the people ain't there. He's got information on every last one of us that'll make your old school put up your finger and tip out of here. Y'all ain't talking to me. He got some stuff that if your secrets would appear on the screen, you a sliver up under your pew. Y'all ain't talking. So that tells me I'm a prisoner. Tell your neighbor, say, I got to obey. I know other people could play, but I got to obey. He chose me and he called me. My sanity is tied to my obedience. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. So here it is. We got the brother, the young Jacob, wrestling with an angel. The angel said, let me go. Jacob said, I will not until you bless my soul. In other words, Jacob was crying from infirmity. He was saying, bless me. Heal my hip. Cause me to become balanced. Cause me to go back to be what I thought I was before you interrupted my life. Because that I understand. But what you just did to me, I don't understand it. And so fear will make me hold on to what other people said I am. But the pain, if I press, is going to redefine me. He's going to give me another name. But I ain't helping y'all. But he said, let me go. Jacob said, I will not till you bless me. He didn't know what he was asking. The angel said, all right, you ain't going to let me go. Then here comes the blessing. High five somebody and said, I promise you, if you don't let him go, through this pain, the blessing is coming. Y'all ain't helping me. I know you're crying. I know you're hollering. I know your mind is all perplexed. Tell somebody, say, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. If you can hang on, he's getting ready to redefine you with a word in the midst of a limp. He's getting ready to change your destiny, to change your destiny, to change your image, to change your perception, to change your generation. Y'all ain't helping me. And I hear him say, tell him I'm a change what other people thought about because of the names that people have put on it. I'm getting ready to undo what your parents have done to you. I'm getting ready. So the angel said, you want a blessing? He said, I tell you what, your name is no longer going to be Jacob. Your name will now be Israel because you're the father of many nations. Are y'all helping me here? I'm telling y'all, this pain is to get you a rename. It's to get a new name. He's getting ready to change the way you think. And what I need to tell you is I need you to call yourself the name that the Most High calls you. Never go Go back to Jacob because you're Israel. Are you hearing me? The enemy's pulling on you. He wants you to go back to lying. Go back to conniving. Go back to selling drugs. Or am I preaching tell? Because the pain is dictating to you to go back to a comfortable place of understanding. High five 
your neighbor a second time and say, this process requires faith. Tell your neighbor, say, I'll trust it. I'm a believe it because this time his image is being smashed into my spirit. I wish I had somebody. I feel like preaching now. Say it. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, verse number 3, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. Micah 7 and 5, trust not in a friend, put no confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Look at this now. Eve deceived Adam with a word Eve was deceived by Jezebel forged Ahab's signature when he swished, he stole his ring and the king's ring was dipped in wax and pressed in the letters and it dictated it came from the king she lied are you hearing what I'm saying people are writing lies you're texting lies you're receiving lies and it's contaminating the truth in your spirit are you hearing what I'm saying, First Kings 21 and 8, she stole it, and with a signature that she stole, she had Naboth killed, so she can obtain land, lies will kill you, y'all talking to me here, the Bible said that Delilah pressed Samson, and he pressed him sorely, agonized him with pillow talk, and judges, 1615. Tell me, Samson, where's your strength? Wish I could preach now. She tormented day and night. Pillow talk will destroy your destiny. Y'all ain't helping me. Now watch what happens. We also find Mrs. Job. Encourage Job. In Job 2 and 9, the curse yawn die. Why? Because of the pain and the agony. See, folk who don't want to go to the next level always stops at pain. But those of us who he's touched us, I don't understand why you got to be pumped to praise him when you look back over your life. Y'all ain't talking to me. Somebody say, how do I know I got the Holy Ghost? Is it speaking in tongues? Is it the fruit of the Spirit? How do I know if Yah is with me? Well, you can fabricate it. You can formulate it. You can put it in principle. But let me give you a simple way. Look back over your life. Should have died, should be in jail. He pulled you out of stuff that people you were running with are still in the day. You're here, and somebody got to beg you to lift him up. To whom much is forgiven, the same loveth much. I want to slap your memory back. He's been good. He's delivered me. He pulled me out. Say it. Say it. Say it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to leave. Say he pulled me out. Come on, help me pull on somebody. Pull all over. Come on, say pull. He pulled. Yes, he did. He pulled. Oh, yeah. Pulled. Pull me out. The cocaine lost his power the hair on no longer could work sex appeal and loins lustful he delivered say yeah. I owe him all the praise say watch your mouth come on say watch your mouth the bible said that Ananias conspired with his wife Sapphira in Acts chapter 5 and they lied to the Holy Ghost and when they lied they died I 
I just came here today to tell y'all, stop lying. Stop lying. A liar won't carry in his sight. How am I lying? You've been feeling like the tail. So you speak based on feeling rather factual faith. You said, I feel like a tail. So I'm a tail. But the Holy Ghost in you says, I'm the head and not the tail some of y'all been lying talking about I'm going through y'all ain't helping me stop lying by faith I'm already out come on somebody it's just a trial it's just a test don't panic we through much tribulation shall enter into the kingdom we ain't talking about heaven kingdom has levels so whenever you have trouble and it comes from nowhere and you can't articulate it then it's spiritual and if it's spiritual all you gotta do is wrestle with the spirit of God until you change come what are you gonna do Job I'm gonna wait until my change come when is your change coming when you start talking right despite feeling wrong when you declare I'm up when the reality is I'm down let the redeem of the Lord say so create your environment create your environment create your climate if you talk right you'll live right y'all ain't helping me when you start talking right the files or the files of the air that come along to try to drop nuggets of negativity your environment will be unconducive for them to land They'll fly, but they can't stay long. They'll hover, but they can't land. Somebody shrug yourself. Somebody brush your shoulders. Say, I'm getting these devils in the form of flying birds. I'm getting them off my life. I'm going back to Eden, to a place of bliss, to a place of health, to a place of wealth, to a place of promise, to a place of being like it. I don't know if y'all know it but cars can't do it Mercedes can't do it mansions can't do it gold and jewelry and bling bling sex can't do it the only peace that you can have is the peace that surpasseth all understanding if you're saved you know what I'm talking about you only could have peace when you have Jesus he's the prince of peace it ain't things that I'm after it's him when I get here I got it all y'all ain't talking when I get here your rustling your warfare your battle is with the process talk to me somebody the Philadelphia 76ers I know y'all don't know basketball but they got some young players that are future stars but they didn't throw them out too soon. They held them back in obscurity until it was time for notoriety. So you got to be patient when you got the goods, but it ain't the time. So they said, why would you draft a high caliber athlete and hide them in the tunnels? Have them riding a bicycle that ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He's pedaling, but it's stationary. Why do you hide it? Why can't we see him? Why can't he play? Because we're developing him. Talk to me, somebody. You can never get a picture. I worked at Kodak. You couldn't get a picture developed from film unless it was a negative in a dark room submerged in water. Tell your name. He's working with my negatives. Got me in a dark place, but I'm in the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, say, trust the process. Philadelphia, when addressing the media, the prince of the power of the air, where is he at? Philadelphia's coach said, we're trusting the process. Shanda baby, Osha. What process? Don't worry about it. We're bringing our players along in the darkness. But when 
get ready. Y'all sure gonna know it. But this is what I want to show you. When the owners and the coaches agree to touch the process, Joel Embiid and that boy Ben Simmons, you know they wanted to play, but they were in a meeting. And the owner said, listen, when they interview you, I need you to say the same things that we are saying in front of the the, the the media, the prince of the power of the air. We need to let him, them know that we're on the same page. If they gotta do it with a frown, cause you really wanna play. But when they ask you, do you wanna play? Tell them, I'm trusting the process, cause my authority in my head knows what's best for my future. Even though now I wanna show you what I got. Tell your neighbors to trust the process. Come on! trust the process and when everybody was doubting them boys the process kicked in now they might be on their way to get a ring say it tell your neighbor I'm on my way wave at me and say I'm going to get a ring he's getting ready to restore my authority I'm on my way say it say it Say yes, say yes. Please forgive me, I don't normally do this, but I gotta tell three people, please say, I'm trusting the process. I'm trusting the process. somebody you care about near you. Tell them saying my words will line up with my authority with their words. So we on the same page. So Jesus says I'm trusting the process of salvation because I have a genealogy, generation, a regene creature species whose destinies are on the line. So I only speak those things which I hear the Father say. Why? It's a process. You understand? I got a job to do. I'm going to be lied on. Yeah. I'm going to have to hold my peace from age 12 to 30. 18 years after knowing my calling, I got to sit on it. Those that have ministries, wait on your ministry. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Translation, don't ordain and lay hands and impart responsibility on somebody who ain't ready yet. I know they're a big tither, but they ain't ready to pastor. Don't equate what people do and give with a level of maturity for that kind of responsibility. A lot of times when we put folk out too soon and they stumble because they don't have the maturity to endure failure in the lights, it messes with their confidence and they never regain the potential that they had. Someday, so I had to hoop, I come. I come, I, I come back and do leadership training. Are you following me? Yeah. Oh, Jesus says, do that. Jesus says, he says, he says, I must be about my father's business. Now watch what he says. He says to his mama and his guardian, Joseph, when they come back from paying, when they leave Jerusalem paying taxes, they start saying, where's Yeshua? Where's Jesus? Which I marveled at. That he was only 12. How, how could Mary hear Gabriel say that you were birthing through a word? Perfect. No sense. It might turn into the second language that, <laughs> that holy day. Indicating that this is the dominion y'all lost through Adam and Eve. That you recreate after your kind by a word. You, you see that? 
So he comes back. Jesus undoes what Adam dropped. Or he picks it up and then hands it back to Adam. That's why when the Roman soldier pierced him in the side, out came blood and blood and water. Where did we come from? Out of Adam's side. So Jesus is pierced in the side so we can come through blood and water back into Jesus. Our lives are hid with y'all in Christ Jesus. So now, here's what I'm showing. Mary hears the word from the angel, gets impregnated. The angel clearly says, this is kingdom. This is the, the ambassador, the propitiation of our faith. He's the way. He, he, he's the ambassador. He's the diplomat from this kingdom that's about to inject his culture. The kingdom of God has come unto you. See, the angel said that holy thing shall be called Emmanuel, God with us, y'all with us. He shall save his people. See, the motive of Jesus is to save what's behind. So if his image is being mashed into you, it's for somebody behind you. So you can't even follow him and walk in this kingdom except you first deny yourself. So the limp is so you lean. She hears the angel and then she gets impregnated and then she carries the savior. Here's the process. You are a born of an incorruptible seed that cannot be destroyed. It's the engrafted word which is able to save the soul. Are y'all helping me while I test them? So you're carrying the same seed. If that spirit which was in Christ be in you, he'll raise you up in the same way. Watch this. If any man believe as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of waters to drink, swim in, bathe, clean. I, I want to try something. I'm going to count to three. I want you to let the waters out. I want you to yada. I, if, you ain't, if you ain't got it, some of these folks who got it going to help lead you. Three, I want you to yada. One, two, three. Let it out. Drown the devil. Drown out depression. Let it out. Drive the devil away. Let it out. Drive, bring in, flush in, flush out, flush it out, flush it out, flush that mess out of your eye. Wash your hands. Bathe in your own praise. Thank you for watching. YouTubers, please subscribe, click the notification bell, like and share. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, simply join the Dominion Center page by clicking like, then like the video, comment, and share the video. Thank you.